evening, everybody. Good evening. Hi, everyone. My name is Sereni Lingi. I'm Chantelle Lay. And we are accidental headband designers because we've turned our hobby of making headbands into a business. Um, so why headbands and why are we here? Um, to answer these questions, I guess we just have to go right back to the very beginning. Do it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so we are from yeah, Cat City. Um, it's called Kuching. It's the capital of Sarawak. Um, I was born and raised in Kuching and then I was shipped off to boarding school in the UK. Um, studied there, did my MBA, worked a little bit in PR, and then I came back to join the family business in property development and management. And today I still am uh, in property development and management. Um, and, yeah. So I was originally born and raised and educated in Sydney. Um, my parents are originally from Malaysia though, but um, I married my high school sweetheart. He's actually from Kuching, which brought me back to to Malaysia, um, and I met Sereni Lingi not long ago, actually, maybe about seven years ago, I think. About that. Um, over a really spicy Pakistani meal. That's how we met, and we were literally fighting for the water jug. And I don't know how, because that, you know, when you're older, it's kind of hard to make friends. You're a little bit grumpy as you get older with yeah. age. <laughs> um, you don't have any other friends. You only have each other. Yeah, and I was new in town, and I was quite happy not having any friends. I was just married, and that was about it. Met Sereni, and literally within seconds. We were doing everything together, and um, yeah, so we became freaky. friends. It was a bit yes. freaky. Yeah. So yeah, a little bit about Kuching. Ta-da! This is her famous excellent place to Kuching visit. Cat. Kuching cat. Yes, the famous cat statue, um, which is located right in the heart of Kuching. As you can see, he's dressed like a fool, pretty much like us on a normal day. Excellent. So, are you ready to see what? we used to get up to and still do. So this is what Chantal and I used to get up to um, in Kuching. There wasn't much to do in Kuching a few years ago. So um, it was really hard to shop for anything, for any outfits, so we used to create and make everything ourselves. So we whenever, we got, we, invited, invited, yeah, whenever yeah. we got invited to an event, we would say, let's get dressed up. Let's shock everybody. Yes, <laughs> let's make something. So this picture here on my left-hand side is a picture of us going to tea. <laughs> <laughs> Can Another I just say, regular Sunday. The dress was the same size for both of us. Yes. Mine just didn't zip up. That's why I had a big belt to keep the dress <laughs> up. But she egged me on. She's like, you look fabulous. You no look one would know. Yeah. So this picture in the middle was um, when we went to the Rainforest Music Festival. We thought it would be really funny to dress as superheroes in the jungle. <laughs> so, and the last picture is actually two months ago. <laughs> for my birthday. So on the weekends, um, Serena and I, we didn't really have much to do. To keep ourselves out of trouble, we would go down to the local haberdashery store and we'd buy sequins and beads and we'd go back to my office and we'd look up like Martha Stewart craft books and we'd go on YouTube and we'd look up, we'd sort of see all the arts and crafts and we would do them. Yeah. And um, it became quite an obsession. So we would turn into little nana um, sort of arts and crafts ladies on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And then we tried making different things. Um, but in the end, we found that we could actually make headbands because they were easier to do than making shoes. <laughs> we could make shoes. We did we try that. Shoes. We looked that up, but yeah, it was, it's not, it was not a lot of easy. It's machinery involved yeah. with that, so yeah, it's scary. Not. But this so, literally was what it looked like every yes. weekend, and we were so yeah. excited by it. And then in 2009, then in 2009, Lady Gaga changed our lives. Thank you, Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> she really did. Um, there was a concert in um, Singapore and Sereni and I, because we're based in Kuching, we thought, let's make a big deal about it. Let's get make costumes, up. let's get dressed up. And this famous hair bow was everywhere. Everyone was seeing it on the scene. And I was like, Sereni, I'm going to order them online. So I went on eBay and I typed in Lady Gaga hair bow and it came up and it was like 70 US dollars. And I was like, I'm going to put the money in, I'm going to do it. The shipping cost like 140 US dollars. It was ridiculous. <laughs> The day before we were supposed to leave to Singapore, the headbands came and it was like this big. It was, <laughs> and it was, and the glue was, was falling apart. It was falling apart, there was glue made. everywhere, and I rang Serena in like trouble. And she's like, What happened? I'm like, The bows aren't going to work, what are we going to do? And then we just looked at each other and we were like, You know what, why don't we just make a, headband? make a headband? So we did. So we made a headband the night before, and then we said, Let's make some t shirts, we put Gaga on it, and we're like, We're going to look awesome at the concert with everybody. So we fly to Singapore, all excited, dressed up, get to the concert. And nobody and was, no dressed was dressed up. <laughs> we're the only two idiots who okay? dressed up. So we get out of the taxi and we're like, oh my gosh, we're all dressed up and look fabulous. Yes. And 
the photographers were there for the newspapers because Lady Gaga came to Singapore, it was a big deal, and people were taking photos of us and we were like posing, but thinking, so this is so weird. And then people came up to us like, where did you buy your headbands from? Where did you buy your t-shirts? And like, we they actually wanted these. to buy it off us. Yeah. Like, these are the only ones we have. And so that's the actual headband we made. This is the first headband we made which we wore to the concert. And um, that's us at the concert, and we actually made it into the newspaper, and we came home to Kuching like, oh my goodness, we're to a concert, and we were in the yeah, newspaper, we are like, like we are chips. awesome, yeah, teeth, yeah. like claim to fame. Yeah. So that was it for the That headbands. was it, yeah. So we thought, but then a few months later, I got called up by a magazine um, to be... <laughs> magazine she shoot in the Philippines yeah and, and we thought hey who gets to be in magazines no one right so let's make something <laughs> for me to wear so I'm a bit feel, cheeky yeah, <laughs> yeah. so I was we like, made think headbands they you? Yeah. yeah they did they, they did. did yes <laughs> there's Serene that, that's me on the cover of the Malaysia <laughs> but she's wearing a wig that's not our headband <laughs> I wish it was my real hair though <laughs> that was my real hair she felt no okay <laughs> so yeah I was yeah I was sent to the Philippines I did the shoot there and I wore some pieces that we made so um, she comes back, oh, she's at met, the Philippines. Yeah, I was she in met. the Philippines, and then I met um, celebrity hairstylist Kim Robinson, and he says, hey, your products are really good. Do you sell these? And I said, no, we don't. Um, you know, so then and I came back. And she, she told us about, yeah, told she, she told me about, about Kim Robinson, and I was like, are you serious? Like, yeah. he's such a famous um, hairdresser yeah. in Hong Kong, and he's got a shop in Singapore. I'm like, if he said that, then maybe we could do something with it. And I guess that was the light bulb moment. Yes, Ooh. that was our aha moment, as Oprah <laughs> likes to say. Um, we thought, hey, we know how to make head headbands, so why not turn it into a business? Because you know, there are no issues with sizing or anything, it's a standard size and everyone, everyone can wear headbands, they're like one size fits all. So that's when we thought we'd start um, making them. Store and making but then we them. realized, okay, we can make headbands, but how are we going to sell them? So Serena is managing um, a mall and a condominium. I'm actually a graphic designer and yeah. I still am. So we both have full-time jobs and we're like, well, we can't open a shop, that would be silly because we still have to work. So we really thought about it and was like, you know what, why don't we do an online store? That would work. We can still do it after hours. And um, we said, yeah, that's a great idea. But then we realised we don't have any background in e-commerce. We have no idea how to set up an online store. So what did we do? We Googled it. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> We Googled it, we typed out how to start an online store and like all these forums came up and we're like, oh, okay, so we found out about bits and pieces. But then we realised, okay, we need to have a brand. So we thought, you know what? She's Serene, I'm Chantel. Serene, I'm Chantel. Used, yep. Done. Okay. <laughs> the brand identity. And then we thought, the key thing is that we make Kim in Kuching, so we put Made in Borneo. And that's mm -hmm. part of our logo and still is today. So it's Serene and Chantel Made in Borneo. Um, and after we had the logo, we then registered the company and then we got a domain name and we were like, oh my gosh, we have a domain name. No yes. one took SereneInchantel.com. This is amazing. Like, <laughs> the business is going to be a success. Like, it's the first name. time. <laughs> and um, then we stumbled across a um, sort of e-commerce store called Big Cartel, which is great. So if anyone is aspiring to start a business, definitely check Big Cartel out. It's, if you have products under 100 um, pieces you can start it. and then if you can use Facebook you can definitely start your own online business it's just like uploading photos and then managing a very simple back end um, and then we did the store and we realized oh um, no one's ordering anything because no one knew that we even had a store yeah. I mean in the wide world web like how do you how do you get attention so we thought why don't we use Facebook so back then 2009 Facebook was really like so hot right now everyone was using it and they had this new thing called pages and that really for us was a huge game changer. So we registered Serena and Chantel as a page mm -hmm. and we forced all, all our friends everybody, and family to like I mean, page. everybody. It was like, yeah. as soon as I saw anyone's name, I'll be like, did you like our page? I was like, because I can see that you didn't like it. And they'll be like, oh my yeah. goodness. We started with just five likes. <laughs> So we, yeah. we use social network definitely, so it started with like a few fans and then it grew and it grew and it grew and it grew and now today we still use other social um, media like um, Instagram, Instagram Twitter, Pinterest. Twitter. Yeah, so it's great in that sense, but definitely the social networking is how um, word spread. Yeah. So from Facebook, we caught the attention of a magazine editor. It was the editor for Malaysian Women's Weekly. So she emailed us and said, oh, can you send us some high-res images for us to feature in the magazine, we'd like to feature headbands in the magazine, and we thought, oh my goodness, let's take a quick picture of a headband. And luckily, Chantel's a graphic designer, so she touched the images up, and we sent it off to Women's Weekly, and there we are. That's our Weekly. first press. That's we our ever first got. press, and we were so Women's proud of Weekly. it. We were so proud <laughs> of it. Still like, hey, we're on the same page as Eva Longoria, Amber Chia's on the cover. Hey, we've made it. Yeah, yeah. we're like done. <laughs> but done. this really legitimized the business because we realized, okay, now that it's in a magazine, does that mean that we're real? Like we're actually headband like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, so um, from year yeah. one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had to make um, a catalog because, you know, we, we got some attention from the press and we started getting more orders, we started getting more customers and customers were asking, do you have a lookbook? Do you have a catalog you can show us? And even other media were asking, we had a lookbook. So we didn't have a lot of money invested in the business because we didn't know how far we yeah. wanted the business to grow. So we thought, okay, let's um, get together a small team of people and with a very limited budget, we <laughs> made our first catalog. We used ourselves as models because we couldn't <laughs> afford real models. And we shot and this we shot in the back seat of yeah. my father-in-law's father car. car. <laughs> uh, this is in the supermarket <laughs> below my office. And that's in my backyard. But from the very beginning <coughs> when we knew we were going to shoot yeah. the catalogue and we had to sort of think about what does the brand represent, we knew it was always going to be, because the brand is Serene Chantel, we knew it was going to be about our friendship and the mm -hmm. fun that we have together. So the images, even today with all our campaigns, it's always an essence of fun. There's always a little bit of humour. There's always a, there's always a low colour. Mm -hmm. So from the catalog yeah, we yes. actually got even more attention because yeah. um, word of mouth was spreading but this time it was the catalog definitely was a more professional look for us yes. <laughs> so we caught the attention of it was NTV7 the breakfast show they actually wrote to us and said hey can you appear in the breakfast show we got all excited at this point Chantel it was just Chantel and I in the office and we didn't have any other sewers or anything so we made everything ourselves at this point so we started sewing and sort of it making became headbands. a bit daunting because yeah. we had full-time jobs and as the orders were coming in at the beginning we were like oh my gosh you don't know these people this is so exciting but then the orders would come and I'm like it's your turn now she's like no 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 I'm busy it's your turn <laughs> no, now no, I'm leading like, oh. <laughs> and we realized we had to hire people and that really yeah. was a huge turning point for us yeah it was after TV that we saw a huge spike in our orders as well as our Facebook page so that that's when we thought yes we have to eventually hire people and train them and um, and I guess the hard part, part about it was headbands. We couldn't just put an ad in the newspaper and say, looking for headband sewers, headband yeah, makers. No like, it didn't exist in Kuching. <coughs> and today, still, it takes us about six months to train um, what we like to call an artisan. artisan. Yeah, so it, it is a labour of love. Um, but after the orders started to increase, our little website, which was very basic, couldn't cope with the, the amount of traffic that we were having. It kept crashing and people were getting really upset and it really limited us so we realised we needed to, to get a proper online store. Luckily I was, you know, I have the design skill to create the look of the website but we had to invest heavily um, getting a web developer in to help us build the online store but it really changed from like less than 100 products to 600 products within a couple of months. But the new store, because we got more traffic coming in, it was more visual, it definitely spread the word again. So the business just slowly started yeah, from there growing we had organically. More press coverage, um, quite a few magazines did features on us. The first one was with Women's Weekly. Um, we talked a lot about our friendship and how we successfully uh, turned our friendship into, into a, a successful bus business. Yeah, people yeah. always ask like, why do you think your business has been so successful? And I think it also comes down to our friendship. We don't hold grudges, and I think that's something that makes the business go forward all the time. Um, and we have the same work ethic. We have it's a really same, hard work yeah, ethic. It's basically like on the same work till you fall, like exhaust yourself. But um, um, the great thing is that we, when we both do agree on something, that's when magic does happen. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a really funny story. We had the Glam team from Glam magazine come all the way to Kuching to shoot us in our, our office and our workshop. And we were so busy that day and we thought, yeah, no, we don't need to do hair and makeup. One word of advice, if a magazine crew comes to your office, please, please, please have your hair and your face professionally, professionally done. done. Because we, when the photos come back, yeah. we were like, I have no eyebrows. Like, exactly. Why? <laughs> <laughs> And it's like high res gloss, and you can't yeah. run away from that. Yeah. So I was, was like, no Photoshop, Photoshop, Photoshop the photo after it's been in print. Because yeah. I'm like, I think we need to do that when this came out. So ladies and boys, yeah, we'll do it. this is definitely one of our favourite um, spreads with that was done with Harpers. Yeah. yeah. But um, how did the headband business grow from just selling um, to individual um, people? Um, at the very beginning, we had no idea that we would sell beyond to a, from from us to a customer until. Mm -hmm. Brands started emailing us saying they want to work with us, and you know it was such a small we were such company. A small company and this yeah. was um, a really good way for us to get our brand name out there and to other target markets as well. So other companies are actually our, our, our separate customer segment for us, apart from our individual buyers. Yeah. So um, we work with magazines. They write to us and ask us, can we do pieces for covers? And um, we've done things for children with um, Women's Weekly and Element OP in Australia. 
We've done collaborations with other designers. We've made catwalk pieces for designers like Jonathan Young. And this was a really fun project for us to do because you know we get to really create out there pieces that people don't wear every day except for us. Um, we've also done work with shopping malls, believe it or not. So like rewarding top spenders. And we've also worked with artists. Yes, we uh, did a collaboration with a Malaysian-based illustrator called Plastidol, um, called Jessica Wong, sorry. And she created yeah. this character called Plastidol, and we thought it would be great um, to get our headbands on a doll who has such a huge head. And this then led to a <laughs> illustrated children's book, which was really exciting for us. That was another project. And we've also done work um, with other artists. artists. Like, this is Zoe Patterson's work. She's based in Sydney and a textile designer who's based in London called Anna, and we like to call it a little bit of wearable art. We've also done side projects. Um, this is a campaign that we shot two years ago. We made, uh, we decided that we wanted to design a small collection of clothes for the model to wear, and this made its way to our online store as well. Okay, and then, <laughs> known fact, okay, Serena Lingi is psychic. I am. Like, fully, you laugh now, but yeah, I No, really she am. really should predict your future, like, if you stay close. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> when we first started um, business, Chantal and I sat down and I said, you know, our headbands are going to appear on Gossip Girl. And she laughs at me. She's like, hell no, yeah. it's not going to appear on Gossip Girl. I'm like, you watch, you watch and wait. And then two years ago, we got an email from the Gossip Girl wardrobe department. I yeah. almost died. We thought it was like spam. Email. I thought it was hoax. And um, I called Chantel and she was like, oh, it's hoax. So I said, you know, let's just reply. We sent them the headbands they asked for and then nothing happened. It was so quiet for a few months. And then the headbands just returned back into the office yes, suddenly. In the same box that and we, we sent like, them out And we were like, this is so in. bizarre. And then all really of a sudden weird. a fan posted on Facebook saying, I've seen your headbands on Gossip Girl. And it was an amazing moment for us. It was. And then, like, similarly a few months later, it also appeared on Desperate Housewives. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> his, um, and then from, from the, American, yes, the American press, we definitely stockers. got yeah. more stockists. Um, how have we been different? I guess the number one thing for us is our headband application that we have online that we designed. Um, Customers yeah. are actually able to custom make headbands online um, and share them on social networking and then have the option to purchase them as well. So this yeah. was something new. Something different. This is our workshop where everything is made in Kuching. So you can we see. We do everything in a workshop. <laughs> and we're really proud that everything is made in Kuching. Yeah. Nothing Oops. is outsourced. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we have monthly campaigns. We release different headbands every month just to keep our storefront fresh. And history repeated itself in 2012 when Serena got married. We yes. were looking to well, get a photo booth. Photo booth. And we couldn't find one, so we decided to Let's get one. Make one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Which wasn't as easy as we thought. Yeah. Um, no, we had one custom made um, from a photo booth manufacturer in the US. And it got to Kuching right on the day of my reception. <laughs> on the day that she got married. Yes. And luckily enough, everything worked. And we decided, let's, um, let's maybe turn this into a business. I'm just going to quickly show you what, what the booth is all about. Photo booth is all about. <laughs> our second Photo business booth. that yes. we've started together yeah. and that's it photo booth um, events yeah. um, and to finish off we have to end with a cheesy end quote with a cheesy quote Confucius um, says choose a job you love but you will never have to work a day in your life true but not true because Chantal and I work bloody hard <laughs> <laughs> but, but I we think at the end of the day we, we really love what we do yeah so today um, we still live and play in Kuching we're still the village idiots only now our hobby has gone well and we're glad that it has Thank you. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Thanks for having us.